I'm Chris Cracknell, eight years of Five Thunder England Sevens and uh, I'm Ben Ryan. About 18 months ago, I uh, had to retire after a very fortunate career um, spanning across 15s and, and 7s and uh, representing my country. I was very fortunate that uh, Ben Ryan came knocking at my door and um, invited me to come out to Fiji. We ended up uh, winning the World Series of Fiji men's and then uh, came back to the UK uh, with the sort of door left open to move back to Fiji and uh, I was offered the, the uh, opportunity to be head coach and director of the women's programme and still assist Ben with the men's sevens programme. So it was a, a dream come true really to be that, I suppose, quick out of retirement and into international coaching. I knew it was going to be different. It really gets you out of your comfort zone. But in Fiji, you know, sevens is um, it's, it's paramount, it's everything, it's on the front, new, front back page, news, everything, it's, it's everything, the, the girls and the men's team. The girls are fantastic, you know, I think they are an unbelievably talented bunch uh, and I could see that from day one. One thing that was glaringly obvious when I got there was that the girls needed to be fitter. Um, they had talent in abundance and, you know, from one to, I think, 32 that we had, they could all catch, pass, offload, run cut a line and you know as a coach it's sort of stuff that as you you know frothing at the mouth you're like yes brilliant I've got a, I've got a wonderfully talented group of girls here how am I going to get the best out of them um, and we started from day one and it was literally a bit of a, a bit of a culling process it was like right these are the, this is the level you've got to get to if your attitude is not right if your fitness isn't there you, you're gone and you're out the door and in sevens it doesn't matter whether it's the men's game the women's game it's, it's you know you've got to work for 14 minutes and you just can't you can't have that mental weakness and you can't have that lack of fitness and ability regardless of how talented you are. My favourite story about one of the girls is Lydia Nengato. She lives up a settlement just north of Suva and during pre-season she'd be turning up and she'd be looking pretty tired and after a couple of weeks I was wondering why she wasn't, you know, she was still at the top of the fitness but she wasn't quite making the improvements that the rest of the girls were. She was just sort of, sort of standing still really and it turned out that she was running catching a bus, training, catching a bus, and running back home again. Uh, you know, I think she was covering an extra eight to 10 kilometers further than the rest of the girls were a day. So that's the girls to a T really. And we were really sort of um, pushed when we were in Brazil and Sao Paulo uh, and Cyclone Winston hit. And um, you know, I'm sure that uh, the, the girls don't mind me you're sort of saying that they were all pretty worried about what was going on back home. But you know, they're led really well by uh, Ana Maria Wakita. Um, and she pulled the girls together and just said, look, we're here to do a job um, and we're here to make the best of this opportunity and the best we can do is to make our country proud by doing the best on the field. Some of the girls have been thinking about what happened back in Fiji and I'm trying to get them together and I know the first day we play, some of the girls have been lost confident and so I keep trying to talk to them and encouraging them, telling them that we are here for something. We just play and just pray for them that they are okay back in Fiji. I keep talking to them and Chris keep talking to them too to make them feel confident. And we are there like a family, so the girls have uh, been giving all their best, even though we lost at the plate, but we are still moving forward. That's how you do if you're in the colours of Fijiana. This is Fiji rugby and it's absolute beautiful magic best. Part of my remit when I first came in was, you know, get the girls qualified for the Olympics and, and go from there. So Dubai was a little bit in the back of our minds and it was also at the end of uh, the first of the three phases that we've got this year in terms of our program. Um, you know, they did really, really well day one and I think for us day two just took its toll of, of how much rugby we had played and how long we had been away from home for. And then it was pleasing when we got to Sao Paulo that we made another another step forward. You know, they've, they've really put it in and, and they're showing the rewards from that and they beat beating the likes of Canada and running Australia close and beating England, you know, that's, um, that's, that's what we expect uh, of them and that's what the nation expects. I believe in these girls. The ultimate goal this year is to get to Rio and, and, and to come, come home back to Fiji with a, with a medal. And uh, there's no reason why these girls can't do that. Everyone sees what the men can do. There's no reason why the women can't be in that same situation. When we qualified, it was like a dream come true to the girls. We are the first female team to be part of the Olympic because there's only the men's team and the soccer team. So 
we are happy because we are the first female team to be part of the Rio. The girls speak of it and it's the pride in one another, the pride in playing for each other, pride in playing for the nation. If you get the opportunity to come to Fiji and you'll see exactly what they mean and what they talk about and anybody that goes there is certainly blown away by how much rugby means to the nation. These girls have certainly got uh, opportunity over the next three or four months to, to, be, uh, to be up there with the superstars that are in the men's team. Thank <laughs> you.